Today on Nerd Out, P to P. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about Cardano P to P. So let's get into it. So back in the Byron era, um, IOHK and Cardano Foundation and Emergo were running all the nodes. This is more of a federated network where, you know, we had a small number of nodes. They were all just talking to each other in a network. And then, you know, all the, the data lists would connect in and your would connect in from the outside and just talk to, to this network. Um, but it kind of ran the whole show in the Byron era. So that's where we were. Then when we moved into the Shelley era, we have stake pools taking over a, a good chunk of the network. Uh, but we still have manual peer-to-peer -peer in the Shelley era, and this is where we're at today. So this is how things work today. So all Cardano nodes have this static list of peers that they connect to. Um, and then IOHK maintains a list of all of the nodes that are registered on the blockchain along with stake pools. And they make sure that they have at least one outbound connection from them to every relay that's registered on the chain. And that ensures that if a block is made behind that relay, it gets pulled out um, because all blocks are pulled out of nodes. They're not pushed out of nodes. And that ensures that they get propagated to the network. So they're kind of still maintaining the main infrastructure that ensures everybody gets um, all the blocks that are sent out. Um, also, where we're at today is all the connections are unidirectional, half duplex. So if I want to connect my node to some, some other staple operator's nodes, um, I have to have an outbound to them, and they have to have an outbound to me. So we each have connections going both ways for all of that to make sure that blocks flow both ways between us. Um, this is kind of wasteful, but it also keeps the networking stack a little simpler in the early days of, of Shelly. Um, also, our connections are hot. So they run all, like if I'm creating an outbound connection, I run all of the outbound mini protocols. If I'm receiving an incoming connection, I run all the server side mini protocols. So all connections are hot. There's never like, oh, well, I'm you know connected to you, but we're not going to talk until, um, anyway. Uh, there's also a tool out there called Topology Updater, and this was created in the very early days of the Shelley launch. It was never meant to stick around long because we thought P2P was coming after two months is what we, we heard from the IOHK teams, but it, it stuck around for a long, long while. Marcus Guffler created this tool. He runs Clio One Pool. It's a centralized tool, and basically all of our nodes, we talk to it once an hour and say, hey, I'm a relay on the network. Here's my tip, and then he registers that, yes, you're good, you're on tip. And then every once in a while, other nodes will connect to his service and say, give me a list of good peers to connect to, and he'll give them a good mix of peers um, that they can connect to and know that they're well connected. And so if your relay is registered on Topology Updater, you know that you will have incoming connections from those other people that are also using Topology Updater. Hopefully this tool can be retired, but um, I spelled his name wrong. I didn't. I must miss the K in there. Marcus uh, Guffler was the guy that created that, and he's been, um, I think he's also an ambassador, if I'm not mistaken, and he's done a lot of good for the Guild Network and tools and, and other stuff, so check his pool out. Um, also, in the Shelly era, if you change those static network connections, the only way to load up new connections is for the nodes to be restarted. So that's kind of a downside. So where we're headed, automatic P2P. And this is what people are talking about when they say P2P is coming. They're talking about this automatic P2P. And the idea here is you can have connections between nodes that are full duplex. So they will negotiate when they handshake with other nodes and say, do you support both sides, you know, or, or are you only a one-sided connection? And so if they're both two sides, then it'll register in full duplex, and both nodes will run both the server side and the client side of all the mini protocols to talk back and forth. It also has the idea of cold, warm, and hot peers, and this is 
managed by a component inside the node called called the P2P governor. Um, and also the connection manager does kind of the low level work. And so what will happen is you have a list of cold peers. Those are those nodes that are registered on the chain, but you're not connected to yet. Warm peers are those peers that you are holding a connection to, but you're not running all of the many protocols. So it's kind of a, a lightweight connection, but it's already established. And then hot peers are those that you're running um, at least at least one side of the, the many protocols with, and you're sending blocks or transactions to them. Um, also, reloading, you can still have static peers because you'll want to do that between like your, your block producer, your core node, and your relays. And so reloading of those static peers is done with a SIGHUP signal. There's no need to restart the node. So you just send a signal to the, the process and it can reload those uh, static peers. So as we move into P2P, the IOHK nodes play a less central role because we all have this um, two-way connection, two-way street for all of the connections between the nodes. And the main thing we're getting with P2P is this P2P governor and connection manager are working to continually optimize the network for flat, fast block propagation. So when everybody's creating connections manually, um, you, you won't always be connected to the most optimal node for you where you are in the world. But um, the P2P governor keeps track of where the block came from, you know, like which node gave you the block first. And so then it can promote those nodes to be at the top of your list for talking to. And so it'll make sure you receive the blocks as, as fast as possible. And it'll continually optimize and, and swap nodes out, you know, trying different things as, as the, the network progresses so that you always get the blocks as fast as possible. Um, so faster block propagation should mean fewer forks and higher chain density. So if you don't get blocks in time, we talked about this a little bit in the week we talked about dual leaders. If you don't get a block in time, um, then maybe you're building on top of the wrong block and then you're creating a fork and then one of the forks has to be discarded. So then the chain gets less dense. There's fewer blocks in a given period of, of physical wall clock time. Um, also, there is no gossiping yet. So all relays in peer-to-peer -peer mode are still found by being registered on the chain. So if you think you're going to run your Daedalus node and somehow magically help the network with peer-to-peer, -peer, you're not because your, your Daedalus re relay is not currently registered on the blockchain. Um, also, you know, there's a lot of optimal network paths between where most of the nodes are run, like in AWS or Azure or some of the the data centers, and so there's big network pipes there. So somebody running a Daedalus node, even on a fiber connection, you know, you're still at the edge of the internet, and so you're not really going to help out the network a whole lot. Um, this, this P2P is mostly to make sure that the core nodes and the block producers and their relays kind of stay central to the network, and all the Daedalus nodes and other nodes are kind of around the edges. They don't need the blocks as fast. Um, and their transactions will still get propagated. So that's kind of how it's designed to be organized. So this is a picture of what um, it looks like on the testnet currently. There's a group of pioneers that are uh, running stuff on the testnet. So I run the profit pool on the testnet down here, P-R-F-I-T. And you can see that some of the core nodes are kind of forming the, the main structure. And then there's some smaller pools that maybe they don't have a lot of stake that are kind of forming the, the outer ring here. But yeah, this it's operating pretty well on testnet so far. We're seeing decent block propagation times. Um, and we're seeing the, the network kind of self-organize around uh, some of those main block producers. But even if you're not a main block producer, you're still pretty well connected um, in a P2P mode because the core is going to be propagating blocks so well. So what will you need to do if you're a stake pool operator to do updates? So you'll have to do some config updates once P2P is rolled out and goes live. Um, there's some settings in the config file, you know, enabling P2P to true, setting a target number of root peers, um, different number of known peers. These are kind of your, your cold peers. Um, 
established peers, that's kind of your, your how many you want to keep warm. And then number of active peers, those are the ones you're running the full-blown, all the mini protocols with. And then your topology file is going to look a little different. You'll have local roots. Local roots is for, you know, you connecting your own nodes and your own relays. And so local re roots, uh, the node tries to always maintain an active connection to these. And then public roots is kind of your, you know, set of bootstrap nodes. You can put some of your buddies' nodes in here if you want. Um, in my configuration, I just put the, the IOHK testnet relays and then my node finds the rest of them from their being registered on the blockchain. But this is just kind of initial stuff to establish a connection to. And um, eventually we'll do gossiping with these peers, but again, gossiping is not turned on just yet. Uh, for those that don't know, gossiping is where you talk to other nodes and you tell them about the nodes that you know about. So it's a way that they can um, kind of learn about nodes without everything having to be registered on the chain. Uh, there's also some new monitoring updates. So this is looking at the EKG output, uh, the JSON. You can pull these values, you know, through Prometheus, Prometheus into your Grafana environment. You can look at, you know, how many of the connections are incoming, how many are full duplex, how many are unidirectional. There's still not a lot of us on the testnet running the full duplex stuff yet. It's just the Pioneer group, um, prunable, outgoing, and then the inbound governor, you know, how many of them to keep warm and how many of them are, are hot for the inbound connections. And that is it for P2P. It's coming very soon to mainnet, I assume. Um, it's running extremely well in the testnet. They're still tuning, taking log files from us, from IOHK, and um, continually giving us tweaked versions of the nodes to try and make this um, as optimal as, as possible and to try and optimize the networking layer of the L1 protocol. So with that, nerd out.